Let's be honest, Final Cut Pro's keyframing tools leave a lot to be desired. It's pretty frustrating that we don't have a keyframe editor like we have in Motion built directly into Final Cut Pro. That's why I created a pack of keyframeless drag and drop animation presets that will help you to avoid the frustration and to animate text, logos, video clips, anything you want without ever touching a keyframe. Introducing Pro Animate a pack of 247 customizable keyframeless presets that are available as adjustment layers and effects. I'll link to it down below if you want to go and pick it up. And in this video, I'm going to show you five practical ways that these presets can be used to elevate your videos to the next level. But first, let me give you an overview of what's included. Once installed, you'll find all of the presets here in the title browser and over here in the effects browser. The reason why we have both effects and adjustment layers is because they are used slightly differently. With adjustment layers, you can adjust the duration. So this is the default duration. I can extend it to make the animation take a little longer. Or I can speed it up to make the animation happen a little quicker. With an effect, you can't adjust the timing. The adjustment layers also affect everything beneath it. So if I drag this logo here underneath this Final Cut Pro logo, you'll see that this adjustment layer affects both of them. Now I'll hide this and delete the adjustment layer and I'll add the effect so you can see what happens over here. If I go to the beginning, you'll see that it kind of gets cropped off here. I'll open up these transform tools here so I can explain the reason. And it's basically because the effect is applied to anything within the bounding box, which is basically the size of the file. The source file is a square file and I've scaled it down to 50%. If I go back to 100%, you'll see that's why it, it crops off at the top. I'll undo that because there's a quick workaround. I'll delete the effect. Let's just close that and I'll hit Option G to create a compound clip of that logo and then I can apply the effect. The reason the effects are nice to have is because if you have a bunch of different layers and you want to animate them all independently, then you can do that. You'll also notice that all of the in animations are blue, all of the out animations are green, and all of the continuous animations are in purple. This makes it a little easier to just see what you need really quickly. The cool thing is you can also stack clips. So let's say we want this to animate in from the left, which would look like that. But at the same time, we want to, I don't know, let's say scale the clip in. I'll put that below this position clip. And maybe we want a bad TV effect as well. So with all three of those stacked, this is what that would look like. Now that you know how they work, let me show you some real life examples of how you can use them. Use case number one, logos. My favorite way to pop logos up on screen is to use the scale overshoot in preset, which looks like this. And then I like to add a continuous movement. And in this case, it's generally a gentle wiggle position, which I'll place on top. And that looks like this. There are of course multiple ways which you can animate a logo on screen. One of them being swinging in from the top right corner, for example. Or you could even squash and stretch the logo in using a squash and stretch down preset like this. You could even use these split slide presets and you could maybe change the number of bars to something like 10 and it would look like this. When adding a logo on top of your footage, depending on what kind of animation you're creating, you'll either want to add the preset first, create a compound clip and then resize and reposition your logo, or you'll want to resize and reposition your logo first, add the preset and then create a compound clip. Let me show you why that matters. If I first resize the logo and reposition it to the corner, for example, and then I add the scale overshoot in preset and hit option G to make a compound clip, what happens is this kind of scales in from the middle. So you can see if I go frame by frame, it animates in from the middle, which might be what you want. But if it's not, you'll need to do it the other way. So I'll hit Command Shift G to break that apart. I'll hit V to disable the scale overshoot preset for now. And then I'll go ahead and I'll reset my transform parameters here. This was at 32 or so. And then I'll re-enable the scale overshoot preset. And then this animates in from the center. So now I'll hit Option G to create a compound clip. And I'll take this compound clip and I'll reposition that where I want it to be. So now instead of it animating out from me, it animates in from the center of the logo, but in the position where I've placed it. Use case number two, text and overlays. 
You can obviously use an adjustment layer to apply it to the title and then create a compound clip so that only the title is affected. But I'll hit Command Shift G to break that up and delete the adjustment layer because you can also use an effect on text layers. Let's head down to scale and I'm going to choose this giant scale in which will look something like this. And maybe I wanted to show something a little more chaotic. Maybe I wanted to add a wiggle position preset on here. I could do that as well. And this would last for the duration of the title. The same principles apply to overlays. I often animate PDF pages onto screen for clients. So let's say I was talking to you about my free 100 shortcuts every Final Cut Pro editor must know PDF. I can do so by using one of the page turn presets to animate it in. Use case number three, special effects. As you would have seen in the intro to this video, I animated myself onto screen and it's pretty easy to do. So I have the clip here of me speaking with a few frames in the front here to allow for the animation to come in before I start speaking. And then I have a clip of just the background. So the first thing I'll do is hold down Option and drag this clip to create a copy. I'll hit Control D and 12 and return to set the duration of this clip to 12 frames. And I'll hit Control Shift S to separate the audio and delete it. On this clip, I'll hit Control Command M to add a magnetic mask. And I'll just select me here quickly. I've included the chair and I'll try to remove the background by holding down Option. And then I'll hit Analyze and then Done. Next, I'll grab this bad TV in effect and I'll set the duration to the same length as this clip. And then I'll select both those layers and create a compound clip using the shortcut option G. Next, I'll select this blank clip of me and I'll hit option command in the up arrow to bring it up. And I'll just move this here so that the end of this clip lines up with the end of this animation. I'll select the end of this cut and hit command T and I'll adjust the duration here. So now what I've done is I've got this clip animating in and I've got this background fading out so we have a smooth transition into the shot. And it looks like this. There are other ways to use these presets for special effects and you're only limited by your imagination. Use case number four, transitions. These presets can also be used to transition from one clip to another, like from a talking headshot like this, to a screen recording. But you can also use the various in and out animations to create customizable transitions between clips. So I want to animate out of this shot using a bad TV effect and then in on the next shot with bad TV in. So I'll just retime those to snap to where the cut of my clip is. And that looks like this. You can obviously change the duration. I'll select both, hit Control D and make them 12 frames each. And that looks like this. You can even use them to transition between slides for presentations. So for example, let's have a giant scale in on the slide. So we start off the presentation like that. And maybe we want to scale out using a split slide transition. So let's go find a split slide left preset and I'll apply that to the clip. You'll see that animates out like that. One of the cool things is you can also customize this. So you can add motion blur if you like, and you can adjust the amount of motion blur. I'll turn this off for now and I'll set the bar selection to six. So we have six bars here. Now all I need to do is scrub over to where it starts to animate out, which is right about there. You don't have to, but you can hit M to create a marker and I'll use the shortcut command option and the up arrow to bring this up from the primary storyline and I'll just place that underneath. So now when this animates out, we reveal the next slide. Use case number five. Images. You can make static images more dynamic by animating them in and creating some kind of movement. Just this week, I had to edit a course for a client and they gave me static title slides to include at the beginning of each video. As is, these title slides are quite boring and I could have made them slowly grow over time, but that's not as exciting. Instead, I added the giant scale in preset to the clip and I also added the Gaussian blur in preset. Then I used the split mask down out preset to animate out of the still image and to transition to the speaker. That looks like this. I hope you find these presets useful in your work. They've been saving me a ton of time lately and I wanted to create something that not only helps elevate your videos, but also something that enhances your workflow and helps you to edit faster. So that's how Pro Animate was born. For a limited time, you can get 20% off using the code PRO20. That will only be valid for the first 48 hours after this video goes live. So click the link down below if you want to grab it. This is a once-off purchase and it includes any future updates that I'll be making to improve Pro Animate even further. If paid plugins aren't your thing, that's totally fine. And if that is you, then you've got to watch these videos about free plugins for Final Cut Pro next.